Um, yeah, hey everyone. Yeah, my name is Jason. I'm the CTO and co-founder at Puffer Finance. So yeah, and thank you for the Eigenlayer team for squeezing me in last minute here. So I'm going to admit, I think Riyadh did an amazing job of really explaining um, anti-slasher, secure enclaves, and everything. So maybe I'll spend a little bit less time talking about that and a little bit more about um, the, the real journey of Puffer. So um, really, this started um, over a year ago. We started working with Justin Drake on this concept of um, how can we add slash protection um, for validators using Intel SGX as a different form of one of these trusted execution environments and um, built this out as part of an EF grant. And the primary mission was we wanted to allow for permissionless um, validators to really be able to lower their bonds um, by having this additional um, slash resistance in the efforts of um, helping participation. And I think maybe uh, it's a little naive of a journey for us because we hoped like, okay, lower bond means more participation, uh, means a decentralized validator set, and all of us ETH maxis can really be happy. Um, but actually, our journey kind of took us on uh, a little bit more. We realized, like, if we really want to um, achieve this, we need to actually grow the pie and allow these validators to earn more. And so this is where um, we are really excited about um, Eigenlayer, particularly these uh, native um, restaking. So hopping into this, um, what is Puffer? So we are Ethereum liquid staking. So all of our validators, they're permissionless. Um, they can join with a low bond. And um, they generate proof of stake rewards, kind of like your standard liquid staking token. Um, but in addition, we're using Eigenlayer native restaking to generate restaking rewards. And really what this comes down to is native liquid restaking and um, NLRTs, or native liquid restaking tokens. So these tokens. Um, accrue both proof of stake rewards as well as uh, restaking rewards. And the goal here is that these validators, you can join permissionlessly, but now you're able to earn more than you could just simply through validating. And this is really like how we can help improve their viability and profitability. So um, won't talk too much. Like our, our secure signer is what we call our, our anti-slasher. is very similar um, to cube, cube signer. Uh, it's, uh, follows the Web3 signer specs. It sits alongside your validator client, and um, like you generate your keys in it, and it um, is able to do your consensus duties. So the idea is that we're adhering to these anti-slashing rules. Um, the logic is running within these enclaves. And your key is actually generated um, within this enclave and never leaves it. So um, if you're like feeding your validator some message that would result in slashing, um, this would sort of reject it. And, um, really, so let's hop in here. So um, another part of what we were doing was we implemented what we're calling these um, rave contracts. So there's this thing called remote attestation, and the contracts are for remote attestation verification. So the idea being we want to be able to per permissionlessly onboard nodes and be able to prove um, to a contract that you're actually running one of these enclaves and the enclave is running the expected logic. Um, because it's not enough for us to just, like in this permissionless setting, trust that someone is running um, some enclave that gives these security guarantees. We need to actually verify it. So in this, um, this slide right here, what's happening is we're actually onboarding um, the guardians, or these are kind of like our oracles within the protocol, and what they're doing is registering an enclave. And this enclave will check that um, a lot of the, like, messages um, for registering validators are correct, like their deposit message is correct, the withdrawal credentials are correct. Eventually this can be sort of replaced as more EIPs are added to the protocol, but um, it's kind of our, our current solution. And so maybe a little bit more on like the Puffer protocol. So the idea here is that we have um, lots of different strategies, or you can think of them as restaking modules um, within the protocol. So when a node joins, they're going to deposit their um, collateral or their bond. So this is either uh, one ETH bond if they're using um, a secure signer and proving that they're doing so, or a two ETH bond if they're not. And in exchange, they're going to borrow ETH um, from the pooled ETH in order to deploy a validator. And so what they, what's going on here is that each of these different strategies or restaking modules is engaging in a different um, set of AVSs. So for example, EigenDA could be one of them. And they're operated by what we're calling a strategy operator. So, so they're like um, someone that specializes solely in focusing on running the AVS. So from the point of view of um, a validator, 
you get to choose based on your own risk preferences which of these different strategies you want to engage in. And in exchange, so the strategy operator will natively restake this ETH and use it to operate the AVS. And as that validator, I'm entitled to some percentage of the actual yield generated, um, as well as the strategy operator taking a cut. And this all ends up trickling back down to the Puff ETH NLRT holders. So as you can see, um, the LSD or NLRT holders are earning both restaking and proof of stake rewards. So just um, jumping into this, um, so what's happening here is the validator is registering to a specific strategy. They're actually um, submitting their evidence on chain, paying their, their bonds, and the contract um, will sort of enter them into this queue of pending validators for that strategy. Um, so they're registered, and then these the guardians are going to go and approve that like the withdrawal credentials are correct, that their um, their deposit message is valid, and then they're going to provision them the ETH to actually run the validator. So as this is uh, checking along, okay, so we've uh, provisioned the validator, and now we can kind of test here. So normally you would use your um, secure signer running alongside your consensus client and it's all kind of abstracted away from you. But in this example here, we can um, try simulating by sending it a block. We see we sent it with um, slot number 10 and um, it generates a signature. And now if we try and attempt a double sign, um, it'll simply fail because we violated the rules. Um, we can't sign two blocks at the same height and the actual logic within the enclave and the, the memory that it kept of the last um, block that it signed will prevent this. Uh, and so, yeah, this is um, Puffer in a nutshell. Um, we're, we're really excited about these anti-slashers. I think they have a lot of promise in both of the validating side and also like as we move into this um, restaking paradigm and we in continue to include these um, in future AVSs. So with that, thank you uh, for having me.